Welcome back to another Unturned video. In today's video, we're going to go over 100 useful tips and tricks for the new map. In this video, I will give tips on progression, crafting tips, how to get certain items, tips with horde beacons, dead zone, and how to get super rich. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like for each like that this video gets in the first 24 hours. I will open a box in a box opening video. So if there are a thousand likes, then I have to do a thousand box opening. Also subscribe to almost any future videos. Each one helps the channel grow a ton. Last video, I announced the mythical giveaway and this is the winner. Claim a prize, please join my Discord, which will be in the description below, and contact me over there. Today, we're going through another one, which is a wealthy dissipator maple strike. To win this, make sure that you've liked, subscribed, and comment something below. Channel members also have a higher chance of winning. If you guys want to start your own answer and escalation server, either for your network or just want to play with your friends, look no further than Pine Hosting. Pine Hosting makes setting up your server quite easily, they have very high performance servers, and the interface is actually very user friendly as well. When I started hosting my own servers, I literally had no idea how to do anything, but with Pine Hosting's navigation, I learned the base in a very, very short time. They have server locations scattered across all the continents, their pricing is very cheap as well. They also host a variety of games where you can buy Rust, Ark, and Minecraft servers. Another feature that I am really a fan of is that you can install plugins and mods just by clicking once. If you already have a server with another provider, they will help you move your servers as well. If you're ready to start your own unturned servers, don't miss the link in the description description below and make sure to use the code LDG for a huge discount of 30% and let's get straight into the video. When you salvage clothing, you will get fabric scrap from it. With this you can craft bandages, dressings, stack them or bedrolls. From fabric you can make fertilizers, sandbags and they are used for more high tier items such as gas mask filters, building manuals, base decorations, EOD clothing and much more. Salvaging items gives you metal scrap. Metal scrap can be used into metal ingots, which are very useful. They can be stacked into metal ingot bundle and they can be placed. These ingots are used for base parts, blast forges, claim beacons, generators, horde beacons, lockers, sentries, toolboxes, biohazard clothing, weapons, and a lot more. If you salvage weapons, you will get gun parts, either semi-automatic, automatic, or manual gun parts. These then can be used to craft more weapons, or if you salvage them even further, they will give you metal springs. Metal springs are used for various items, including blast forges, claim beacons, vault doors, metal doors, generators, lockers, and also weapons. You can unlock more crafting recipes if you get handbooks. There are various, some of them you craft them, some of them you find them, and some you can get from the safe zone. These include the hunting handbook, munitions handbook, police handbook, and the black book. The black book is used for items such as bouncing betties, explosive barrels, throwing knives, and wooden trapped roofs. The hunting handbook is used for bear traps. The police handbook is used for making various grenades including flashback grenades, smoke grenades, and you can also make police barricades with them. The munitions handbook gives you the ability to craft landmines, new mortars, concertina wire, tank traps, UCAVs, AP grenades, and also HE grenades. Refined oil is used to craft metallic buildables. To get these you need to go around the map and shoot explosive barrels, or you can find them in construction areas. Don't get too close to them because they can kill you. Two boxes are also very important. To get this, you need metal ingots, logs, duct tape, pliers, blowtorch, wrench, and a hammer. Two boxes are used for EOD clothing, turning metal scrap into metal springs, HMT, and sentry auto cannons. To make a hammer, you need logs and scraps, but you can also find this. To make a wrench, you need metal ingots, but you can also find this. Adhesive compounds are necessary to progress through the map. You need them for C4, claim beacons, horde beacons, gospel filters biohazard clothing, and a lot more. To craft these, you need glue, tape, and chemicals. All of them can be found in the construction areas. Filament spools can be salvaged into plastic scrap. To make a bandage, you need four fabric scrap, and with two bandages, you can make a dressing. Electric components can be gathered by salvaging weapon sites, lasers, and you can craft circuit boards with them. Circuit boards then are used for blast forges, charges, claim beacons, drill bombs, industrial generators, horde beacons, sentries, thermal charges, and a lot more. You can get decorations from your base just by punching frames and posters in houses. There is an LDG poster in Parkwood and in Walk-In. Mechanic zombies can drop really good loot, including blowtorches, chemicals, car batteries, wrenches, gas cans, steely wheelie automobiles, and melee weapons. You can build very easily with wood. You only require a few wood per buildable item. You can upgrade your wooden buildables to reinforced wooden buildables just by having a wooden buildable and a metal ingot. The strongest material is metal. For this you need metal ingots and refined oil, cooking one, and heat which you will get from a blast forge. With a complex building manual you can make a building planner, learn complex building knowledge to make more buildables. A blast forge is instead of a campfire. You do need a ton of items to craft this including adhesive compounds, springs, refined oil, circuit boards, and ingots. A claim beacon is basically a claim flag. To make this you need ingots, springs, adhesive compounds, circuit boards, and a toolbox. 
In this map, there are two types of lockers. The normal one, which you need ingots and springs, and the second one, which is an industrial locker, which you need ingots, springs, and a toolbox. There are also two types of crates, either a wooden crate or a large wooden crate. For a small one, you need 8 logs, and for a large one, you need 20. There's also a wooden wardrobe where you need 10 logs. Wooden doors are locked for people not in your group. All you need to make one is some logs and metal scrap. For a metal door, you need ingots and springs. As for a vault door, you need ingots, springs, and refined oil. You also need cooking one and a blast forge for heat. With two ingots, you can make one-way gloss. You can raid with various methods in this map, including weapons, C4, tanks, railgun, minigun, grenade launcher, missile strikes, and a lot more. Airdrop can have a lot of these raiding methods, including C4, detonators, all types of grenades for the Hermes, and blank strike modules. Nitroglycerin is very important for crafting raiding items. These can be found in military locations and military zombies can also drop them. Drill bombs can be crafted by an impact grenade, which are commonly found in Red Grove Airfield, Nitroglycerin, and you also need circuit boards. A blink strike module can be turned into a precision strike, a bomb strike, or a mortar strike. To use these, you need an LTLM, which can be found from military locations, airdrops, or dead zones. There are two types of charges, which are explosive charge and a thermal charge. Explosive charges can be found in airdrops, horde beacons, or you can craft them. To craft them, you need circuit boards, adhesive compounds, scrap, plastic, and nitroglycerin. As for a thermal charge, you can only craft this, and to craft it, you need circuit board, adhesive compounds, scrap, plastic, nitroglycerin, high-tech fuse, and a detonator. You don't need to detonate this since a thermal charge will also detonate by itself. The tank can be found in Red Grove Airfield. Missiles can be crafted by nitroglycerin, metal ingots, and circuit boards. The minigun also raids. You can get this by crafting it, where you would need HMG components, where you can find these components in the tier 1 dead zone, automatic gun parts, metal ingots, metal springs, adhesive compound, and a toolbox. The Valkyrie ERG-2 also raids, and this is basically the railgun. This weapon can be found in dead zone, tier 1, and only holds one bullet. And you can also find more slugs for it in the same dead zone. Any weapon that takes marksmen or magazines can raid. They don't really give a lot of damage, but still can be used to raid wooden bases. There are two types of rocket launchers in this map. The first one and the weaker one is the Poseidon, which you will craft. To craft this, you need a metal ingot, impact grenade, and a nitroglycerin. This rocket launcher is actually really well against vehicles. The second rocket launcher is called the Ares, which is a four rocket rocket launcher, each causing 400 structure damage, and this only way to get this weapon is through airdrops. In this map, there are also various unmarked locations, including military tunnels north of Artemis platform, which can give you some pretty good loot. At these unmarked military locations, military vehicles can spawn. Mortar shells, nitroglycerin, throwable knives, metal ingots, bricks can be thrown. Baffle kits are used for certain weapons to upgrade to suppressed weapons. Hollow point magazines give 20% more bullet damage. Armor plates are used for upgrading armor. If you wear EOD clothing, you will walk slower, but they do give a ton more protection. If you kill raccoons, you will get fabric or raw meat. Around Artemis platform, there are underwater bombs, so be careful when you swim around there. Our room safe zone is the main safe zone. Sephirian zombies with drunk glasses can drop really good craftable items, such as 3D printers, electronic components, coffee filters, circuit boards, pliers, and spools. There are three dead zones on this map, or marked on the map. The unmarked circles are tier 1 dead zones, and to access these, you only need a gas mask. Our timeless platform is the tier 2 dead zone, and to go there, you would need biohazard clothing. The tier 1 dead zone near Camp Crystal is much better than the other one, in my opinion. At this place, you can find the Mega Zombie, get HMG components, and also the Valkyrie. To craft a gas mask, you need the gas mask filter, fabric, and also plastic scrap. And in order to craft the gas mask filter, you need a canteen, coffee filter, adhesive compounds, duct tape, fabric, and plastic scrap. For biohazard clothing, you need firefighter clothing, high tech fuses, metal ingots, and adhesive compounds. In the dead zones, it is much easier to find airdrop grenades. Airdrop grenades will drop an airdrop wherever you want, and it can have all sorts of weapons, C4, detonators, blank strike modules, LTLMs, night visions, attachments, adhesive compounds, and a lot more. From all the dead zones, you can get EOD clothing, attachments, refined oil, elite specs, buffle kits, nocts, acids, Uzis, MPs, compacts, RSSO3s, subot slugs, and a lot more. From the tier 2 dead zone, you can get all sorts of weapons, HMG magazines, detonators, missiles, high-tech fuses, and all these specs. In here, there is a secret room which you will need to open. If you bring a breaching hammer in here, you can also get HMG components when you break inside a room. You can get airdrop module from here, which when you go to Fort Marison, this will spawn an airdrop on Fletcher Island. And this airdrop is much larger and it has a ton more loot than just a normal airdrop from an airdrop grenade. 
The Dead Zone ship in Fort Artem is also spawns construction zombies which can drop jackhammers, work lights, generators, and much more. The only place to put a horde beacon down is TKR Industrial. A horde beacon spawns 100 zombies including the mega zombie and drops 15 items. Horde beacons are crafted by ingots, small generators, adhesive compounds, circuit boards, nitroglycerin, and a toolbox. From a horde beacon you can get charges, weapons, attachments, and ammunition including Noct, Tunisian, RSSO3, grenades, pistol crates, night vision, Falcon Point 50, and LMG magazines. 3D printers are used to crafting attachments and crates. Sentry autocannon has no ammo limitations. It will just keep shooting. Wear clamps are needed for sentry engines and you can craft wear clamps with ingots, scraps, circuit boards, and a toolbox. At Parkwood you can find almost anything since all types of zombies spawn there. You can easily make a backpack just with fabric and duct tape. You can sell items at safe zone for money. You can sell ingots, fabric, logs, and filament spools. In locations across the map you can find dead drops where you can sell items too such as weapons, books, attachments, and supplies for money. You can craft various good weapons on this map. One of them is the crown which is one of my favorite weapons on this map. This weapon only holds one bullet though but it's a one shot headshot weapon. To craft this you need metal scrap, metal ingot, manual gun parts, wood log, and nitroglycerin, making it very easy to make. To make its ammo you just need nitroglycerin and metal ingots. To make metal wardrobes you need a toolbox. To make a radio you need scrap and components. Salvaging amphibious assault clothing gives you electronics. Salvaging electronic components gives you metal scrap and plastic scrap. You can enter the tier 1 dead zone under Vernon Farm through a tunnel that is next to an unmarked gas location. There are military bunkers around the map which can drop some good loot. One of them is on the bottom left side of the map a bit above the unmarked military tunnel. In here also you can find a safe zone keycard. There's also another bunker under TKR Industrial. Here you can find multiple military items but if you jump down at the very bottom you will get stuck or you will just die. There is a small unmarked military location north of Parkwood. You can also craft a 3D printer with circuit boards, white filament spool, springs, ingots, and a toolbox. As for fishing, there are three rods. The tier 3 rod can get you some really good loot including items for adhesive compounds, gun crates which can drop weapons and ammunition, important tools such as circuit boards, and even tier 3 rods which you can sell for a lot more money. One of the tactics that I found that's very OP for tier 1 dead zone is alerting zombies and going under the gate. This can also alert the mega zombie and you're just safe and you're just shooting at their legs. After you get a safe zone key card, you can enter the safe zone from multiple areas in the map. They are all marked on the map, but one of them is between Red Grove Airfield and TKR Industrial. Wearing a rucksack makes you move slower. You can craft duct tape with glue and fabric scrap. From fishing you can get weapon cases which will drop a random weapon and its ammunition. There are a few different weapon cases, but you can basically get almost every single weapon. If you salvage HMG components, you only get some springs and some ingots so I don't really recommend doing this. You can upgrade military clothing into EOD clothing with armor plates, fabric, adhesive compound, and toolboxes. And that is it for the 100 tips and tricks. I really hope that you guys did learn something from this. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. This video was recorded before the map launched, so some stuff may change here and there, but I did cover the most important items. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. You guys can answer each other's questions and I will see you in the next one. Bye!